were just in a little cafe uh, restaurant thing just after having been to the Killing Fields in Chumek. Um It was heartbreaking beyond belief. Every everywhere you looked, there were burial mounds. There were remnants of where people had been killed. There were bits of cloth from fabric from where their clothes had just you know where they'd been buried in clothes. There was a tree where women and children had had their heads bashed against uh, against it to be killed. Um, there were just things everywhere that were horrific. Um, it was really well worth visiting to see that side of history, but it was completely heartbreaking and demoralising and in many, many ways destroys your faith in humanity that such atrocities could happen in in a place and actually that for three or, or more years um, when it was taking place that a lot of the world was turned away from it, that they didn't really recognise it. Um, they still recognise Pol Pot in the UN um, as, a, as, a, as the head of the state. They recognised all of those kinds of things um, and they, a lot of the world was kind of blind to what was happening. But next up we're going to the museum that's twinned with it, um, the museum also about the Khmer Rouge killings. Um, so we're going to learn a lot more about what happened there um, and it's all based around a children's playground where, and near a school where a lot of other killings happened. So again, it's going to be incredibly dark and incredibly moving, um, but again, well worth seeing. Um, the Khmer Rouge incidents were just horrific. It was a three-year campaign of slaughter and so I think it's only right in many ways that these things are remembered as horrific as they are, remembered so that we can hopefully learn lessons about this kind of genocide to never have it happen again. So now we are here in Tools Lane Museum, also called S21. It was here the Pol Pot, it was first the school, it was here he, um, the Khmer region brought a lot of uh, Cambodian people and they tortured and questioned, interrogated people, also murdered people. And some of those prisoners here were sent to uh, where we were before the killing fields.
So um, we've just been walking around uh, this museum, which used to be a school, um, where loads and loads of people were tortured, murdered, and just generally badly treated. And it's just, it's just horrific. Um, everywhere you look, there's evidence of senseless murder and, and torture and everything, and it's horrible. And the whole Khmer regime was only uh, in effect for about three and a bit years, and yet. There is countless stories of torture and the worst kinds of brutality. From being in rooms and seeing pictures of women, children and adults, uh, adult men um, all having been murdered or tortured. Um, from seeing rooms, and old classrooms where people were shackled to beds and beaten and given electric shocks. It's just staggering, this collection of of horrific crimes and the fact remains still that many of the, the Khmer Rouge officials who uh, authorised a lot of these from the top are still, are still awaiting trial and it's so strange to think that most of this was only about 40 years ago, 40 maybe even 30 in some cases years ago. It's horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Hello, so here we are in um, the market that's been nicknamed the Russian market here in Phnom Penh. Um, it's full of loads and loads of stuff, like every kind of thing you can imagine. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's also a nice welcome shade from being outside because it is boiling, hence the kind of the sweat. Um, but yeah, we just kind of wander around and see what there is to offer. And yeah, Nick, Nick's here. We might also try and find him some tape for his head as well. Hello, so here we are in uh, the restaurant just across the road from our guest house on our final night in Phnom Penh um, with <laughs> bizarrely dramatic music in the background. So, uh, we are just kind of chilling and enjoying our final night here and it's been really really fun so far. Um, it's been a bit of a whirlwind in many ways. Our, our little four days in Phnom Penh have been an amazing kind of set of experiences from some of the really dark history of Cambodia to some really, uh, to a really odd wild night out and to, you know, beautiful scenes and amazing palaces. So it's been a bit of an odd one. Uh, my highlight of Phnom Penh probably has to be, hmm, it's a tough one. I would maybe say, uh, actually, as weird as it sounds, the killing fields, because although it was horrific and really, really hard going at times, there was something about it that really st uh, like, uh, stayed in my mind and really lodged itself there and wouldn't let go. Um, and I think it was really, without sounding too pretentious, it was really a ch like a changing moment in my life that I got to kind of see that firsthand um, and, and kind of learn a lot more about everything around it. Uh, so I guess the low point is maybe, I sound like I'm, being, I'm complaining about something really stupid here, but uh, 
actually the heat, because although it's been gorgeous, gorgeous weather, uh, the, the heat has just taken so much out of me. And it's meant that where normally I'd be like, oh wow, let's go to this next room, let's find more about this thing, let's, let's look at this place, let's go here. It's been a lot more of like, oh my god, I have to move. Ah. Which I can't complain about, it's been lovely, but at the same time, a little bit warm. So yeah, I might have to say that. And it says a lot about Phnom Penh that my low point is the hot weather rather than the place itself or rather than the people. So yeah, that's about that. My highlight of the Phnom Penh would, as the same as Bob, would be the killing fields right just outside of Phnom Penh. And it was very, very heartbreaking. The best part of the Inside, we want to say, can you just go? 